Hello everybody and welcome to the channel for those that are new and welcome back to the channel for those that have been around for a while. This video is going to cover an all comprehensive overview of high ticket drop shipping. What is it, how it works, why it's a good model, why it's a reliable model, uh, reasonable ex expectations, and pretty much just everything to consider with it. And I think this video will be kind of more tailored towards those that are very new to the concept of the model itself. Um, I think a lot of the stuff that'll be covered here will be kind of redundant for those that have followed the channel for a while or are already familiar with the model of high ticket drop shipping. So I'm just gonna lay out an agenda here for you. Uh, the agenda is as follows. What is high ticket drop shipping? Uh, how does it work? Why is it a good model? How do you do it? Reasonable expectations as far as budget, as far as, uh, as profit to be expected. And I'll end with a few frequently asked questions that I see uh, either in my DMs or in my comments. So uh, real quick, uh, before I hop into it, just a quick note. I know I'm wearing the same combo uh, up top as I did last video. I promise uh, this is a coincidence. I wear other things. I own other clothes, but it just so happens I'm wearing the exact same thing today as I was in the last video. Uh, just wanted to make that point. Uh, so let's get into it. What is high ticket drop shipping? I think to explain high ticket drop shipping, it's worth giving a very, very brief explanation of what drop shipping is as a whole. Drop shipping is simply an, a, an, a method of order fulfillment. And what it means is, let's say I have a website, I'm listing products that are produced by a manufacturer. And so a customer orders from my website and I, will then send a purchase order for that product to the supplier and the supplier will ship the product directly to the customer. So the customer pays retail price, I pay wholesale price, which is anywhere from 20 to 40% less than retail price. And I will keep the difference of whatever that price ends up being on that particular order. Um, there's obviously a few other moving parts with it, but at a very simplistic level, that's how drop shipping works. Uh, high ticket drop shipping specifically, as the name suggests, is a model in which you sell high ticket or expensive products. It, depending on who you ask, uh, the term expensive can have kind of a wide spectrum. There are some people that are in the 400 to 800 range. Uh, what I preach and what I practice is in the more like 1,000 to 5,000, even all the way up to 50,000 uh, range. So the, the name of the game is more quality over quantity. And so the, the whole thinking behind this is uh, you don't have to make as many sales to make just as much, if not more of a profit. Because if I sell a $5,000 item, I make 40% gross margins on it. Uh, gross profit on that is, is $2,000. And obviously that's not taking into account shipping, that's not taking into account the ads that I, uh, the money that I spent on ads to, to sell that product. But um, at a very simplistic level, that's, that's why I think it's a very lucrative way to go as far as e-commerce. So again, this is very much meant to uh, explain things to someone that's maybe considering getting into e-commerce or expanding their e-commerce palette. Um, I, I think it's a really solid model. So um, that's, that's how it works, um, or, or I guess what it is. I'll, I'll get into how it works and, and maybe more specifically how you do it. So uh, there are quite a few steps that have to happen more or less in order. And I think one of the draws to high ticket drop shipping is because it's a bit more challenging to get up and running. Um, it turns a lot more people away. It's a higher barrier of entry, which means a lower level of competition. So if I were to start high ticket drop shipping today, I'm brand new. How would I go about it? Well, the first thing I need to do is set up a business entity. If I don't already have one, uh, this is just going to be required uh, for tax purposes. It's going to be required to partner with any manufacturer worth a damn. And it, that's that's just the nature of, of the beast. This it, you. You really have to think of it truly as a legal business entity. You are starting a business. Okay, so I have my business business entity. Now what? Well, now I have to start conceptualizing what kind of product do I want to sell? And so this is, this is one of the most challenging pieces of the entire model itself. 
And this is the most challenging piece of really any e-commerce path in general is what products do I sell? What niche do I get into? And anyone that says that niche is not the most important part is not correct in my opinion. And so at a very high level, at a very general level, uh, you want to choose a niche that A, meets that price point that I mentioned, uh, you know, anywhere $1,000 or above. And you want to find something that is peculiar. I always use that word. If Again, if you've followed the channel for a while, you know that I use the word peculiar. What do I mean by peculiar? So if you think of something that costs $2,000, I know TVs are cheaper now, but let's just use TVs, for example. That's not a very peculiar product. Every household in America has a television for the most part. And if I, if I type in on Google, you know, TVs or Samsung TVs or Vizio TVs, who's going to pop up in the Google ads? It's going to be Best Buy. It's going to be Walmart. It's going to be Target. It's kind of everything under the sun, all the big box stores that are selling TVs. So very, very common products, even though they're expensive. That's not, the, that's not the space that I want to get into. The space that I want to get into is more undiscovered products. The reason for this is because the competition is lower. And, and because the competition is lower, it's easier for me to show up in the Google advertisements. Um, I don't want to get ahead of myself when I'm talking about Google ads. Again, I want to keep this pretty high level. But just keep in mind, I, I want to think kind of outside of the box and peek beneath the surface uh, when I'm thinking about the product to choose. And you can look at my channel. There are several videos that talk about niches of, of what niches I think are really good. So what I'm talking about are anything from water pumps to conveyor belts to uh, bathroom stalls to parking meters. The, this is what I'm talking about. It's like these aren't things that you would ever think of, but they happen to be very expensive and they happen to be sold online. And they also happen to be unusual enough to have a lower level of competition. Uh, so now I have my niche. What do I do now? Well, I have to build a website around this niche. And I use the platform Shopify. I think Shopify is an outstanding platform. It is an all-encompassing not only can you build a website on it, you can you can take orders, you can you can manage uh, customer data, you can do a lot of things with Shopify. But as I'm getting started, what I'm really focused on is building a website with Shopify. And no, you don't have to have technical experience. You, it, I always say, if you can navigate Facebook, you can navigate Shopify. Uh, there are many pre-built themes out there that that what I mean by theme is like a, a template for your website that you can choose. Um, most of them, some of them are free. The really good ones you do have to pay, you know, anywhere from 100 to 300 bucks for. And uh, it's it, from there, it's a very straightforward process of how to actually build and customize your website. It's drag and drop. It's not really hard coding at all, although um, that kind of stuff can come in handy along the way if you want to do something beyond what your theme offers. Um, but really, you are tailoring a website around the specific niche that, that you are choosing. So the color scheme, the style, the navigation of the website, everything. And, and a good way to kind of get ideas of what to make it look like is to simply look at competitors' websites and just see what are they doing, why are they showing up high in the Google Ads, um, does it look professional, et cetera, et cetera. And okay, so now now you have at least a skeleton of a website. Um, and when I maybe let me back up a little bit. All you really want on the website at this point is a nice looking homepage, maybe a couple demo product pages. And again, in Shopify, this is all very straightforward of how to do it. Uh, you want a contact us page, and and maybe like an about us page that gives a brief description of of the business and and the customers that you want to serve, et cetera. Like look at any About Us page and it'll give you some good ideas. Um, okay, so now you have at least the skeleton of a website. Now you have to get suppliers. And this is the step that really intimidates a lot of people. It turns a lot of people away and it makes a lot of people unwilling to pursue this model. Um, to get, it, it, at the end of the day, I think getting suppliers is one of the easiest steps in the process. I think it is so much easier than everybody makes it out to be. Uh, but at, at the end of the day, it is you 
being a little vulnerable. You have to put yourself out there and you have to interact with human beings, basically asking them to let you sell their products. Um, and so finding suppliers is very easy. You could literally just tap, type into Google or even chat GPT suppliers for X product or manufacturers of X product. And uh, from there, you reach out to them and, you, and your approach is basically, hey, uh, this is what I'm doing. Uh, this is the website. This is, uh, this is my background. I know I'm new to the space, but um, I think for the customers that I'm going after, your product line really fits this. And I want to have a conversation about what it would look like to have a wholesale relationship with you. Let me specify. In high ticket drop shipping specifically, and I think in any drop shipping, it is most advantageous to only partner with domestic suppliers. So that means when I say domestic, I mean suppliers that are in the country of your customers. So if you have a US based high ticket drop shipping company and you were selling to US based customers, you only want to be working with manufacturers or suppliers based in the United States. It's the same for Europe. It's the same. It's the same all over the place. Um, there are a few reasons for this. Um, for one thing, tax wise and logistics wise, it makes things a lot simpler. Um, it speeds up shipping time, which is a massive thing uh, in, in any endeavor because uh, I myself, you know, I'm, I'm an online shopper. I don't like waiting a long time for my products to show up. I don't like when they have to come from China. There's another element of it where, you know, you want to qual you, you want to partner with quality companies that are producing quality products. You don't want to be selling gimmicky or or unvaluable or not well made things. And so, if you were selling to American customers and you're and you're selling American brands, that's just going to build a level of trust, and it's it's going to give you a much higher success rate than it would say if you were selling in the United States only shipping products from China, for example. Nothing against China. It's just that's that's just the nature of of commerce in general. Um, so now you have suppliers. Now, what do you do with their, with their products? You have to list them on your website. And I have an online course that goes into all of this of how to set up the, the product pages in a, in a really concise and effective way. Um, but basically, you, you upload their products and you list them on your website. Now you have to advertise them. Um, high ticket drop shipping is at the end of the day a model in which you have to spend money to make money and the most effective platform to advertise for high ticket drop shipping in my opinion is google so if you have ever shopped on google which i'm sure that's 99.999 percent of you and you type in the product that you're searching for let's say you're i'll use the tv example again you you type it in uh tvs for sale or, or uh LED, I don't even know what they are, 4K TVs now, you'll see a bunch of ads pop up. That's exactly where you will be advertising for, uh, for high ticket drop shipping. The reason Google is so effective and the reason that search engine marketing is so effective is because you are advertising specifically to people that are typing in the keywords of the products that you are advertising. So, so really you are only advertising to people that are specifically in the market for the things that you have to sell. Now let's contrast this to what I mentioned earlier, low ticket drop shipping, where you know, you'll see a, a Facebook or an Instagram ad pop up and sometimes they're relevant, sometimes they're tempting, uh, but a lot of the time it's popping up and, and as it pops up, I'm not even in a mindset or I'm not even considering buying that product. I wasn't already considering buying that product. Um, but in, in contrast to this, uh, in, in high ticket drop shipping, you are only advertising to people that want to buy what you are selling. And, and that's, that's why it's so targeted. And in my opinion, that's why it's one of the most effective models of e-commerce in the world. So um, that's how you do it. Um, that's how you get it set up at least. Uh, once, once you are advertising, um, obviously the goal is to start taking orders. Uh, so let's say, you know, you get a sale, which is the goal here. Uh, you will see it pop up on your phone from, from Shopify, assuming you've downloaded the, the Shopify app. And it's, it's one of the most gratifying notifications in the world, seeing that you made a sale with the store that you put so much work into. 
And from there, you then have to send a purchase order to that respective supplier for the product that they bought. Um, and then the supplier will ship directly to the customer. I'm gonna get into how the fulfillment process works in FAQ, so I'll table that for now. And then from there, it's basically rinse and repeat and, and optimize things as you go. So that is how you do high ticket drop shipping, again, at an extremely high 10,000 foot view level. Reasonable expectations. Um, there are a lot of people on YouTube and, and you know, I'll be the first to tell you, I really don't pay a lot of, of attention these days to the other high ticket drop shippers on YouTube or my quote unquote competition in, in the YouTube high ticket drop shipping space. Um, but there are a lot of people out there, just speaking from experience, that will give you unreasonable expectations as far as high ticket drop shipping goes. Um, at the end of the day, it's, it's challenging. E-commerce is challenging. And if it was easy, uh, everybody would do it and everybody would be successful. But as time goes on, e-commerce gets more competitive and that's not unique to high ticket drop shipping. It's just the nature of the beast. Um, so reasonable expectations. You know, there are some people that, that get started and they are making sales the day that they start running ads. I have a very good friend that I've been friends with for the last few years. Um, her name is Gia. She, uh, she lives down in Texas. And uh, we got started in high ticket drop shipping. We're in the same high ticket drop shipping course together. And she had success pretty much right off the bat. And she was doing crazy numbers. I mean, she was doing you know, 200 to $300,000 months after a few months of, of getting started. I did not have that experience. Um, it was several months before I was even breaking even or turning a profit. There were a lot of reasons for this. My website was pretty crappy. Um, I didn't really know the identity of my store. I wasn't really clear on what was selling. Uh, there, was, there was a lot of moving parts that I just kind of had to figure out over time. And so, the first reasonable expectation is that you you have to approach it with a level of patience, knowing that it's not going to be most of the time, although it can be some of the time, overnight success. Um, as far as profit to expect, I get questions all the time, how much money do you think I can make in the first three months? That is just not a question I can answer. There are so many variables, there are so many moving parts that it is an impossible thing for me to answer. It comes down to the quality of your website, it comes down to your niche, it comes down to how well you're running Google Ads, it comes down to your budget and how much you can spend on Google Ads, um, and it comes down to your customer service and how well you interact with customers. Um, there are so many variables to it. Um, I guess I can just give you like my average months, I can give you my most profitable months, and I'll be the first to tell you I've also had uh, months where I did not make a profit and I was actually in the red. Um, average, it, it obviously increased over time. In, in the peak of it, I would say my average profit was around nine to 10,000 per month. Uh, but I had plenty of outlier months. My most profitable month uh, was June of 2022. And it was just under $40,000 that I profited after all expenses, after all revenues. Um, and so that, that was a really good month for me. So th this is to paint the picture of Yes, you can have unbelievable months like that, um, but the nature of it is, is that it's e-commerce and you're gonna have months where you don't do as well and, and it's possible to even have months where uh, you, you don't turn a profit at all. Um, so again, I, I approach this channel with a, as high of a level of honesty as I can um, and I, I hope that's helpful for the people that are watching. Let's get into a little FAQ and then we'll wrap up. Um, how much money should you budget for getting started in high ticket drop shipping? Um, it, this is one of those questions where it's hard to give a definitive, this is how much you need. I do think it's reasonable to say that there are minimums that you should expect to have on hand. Um, obviously the more that you have, the better. And let me just say, you don't want to approach this with money that you are not comfortable potentially not getting back. I'm not a financial advisor, I don't give financial advice, but uh, having gone through this myself, that's just, that's just my two cents on, on the case. The number I would say that you want to have at a rough minimum is $1,500, so $1,500. Um, you're gonna want to be able to buy a nice looking website theme, 
um, you're going to have to pay licensing fees to get set up as as a um, as a business entity with uh, the federal government and with your domicile state, um, and then you're going to have to pay for Shopify, which is about thirty bucks a month. Uh, but the biggest expense is Google Ads, and Google Ads operates on a method called pay per click um, or, or cost per click (CPC). And so basically that means you have to spend a certain amount of money every time somebody clicks on your ads. And the more, the more that you bid or, or, I mean, that's, that's the term for it. The more money you say, I would like to spend this much money on clicks for my, for my ad, the higher Google will prefer you and the higher Google will place you on the page. Um, it just makes sense for Google, uh, on, on Google's side, the more that someone is paying, uh, for someone to click on their ad, the higher they're going to place you. Um, so obviously the higher that you can bid on ads and the more money you have to spend on ads, the more traffic you can get and the higher that you can be placed uh, towards the top of, of Google. Um, so th at that said, I would say $1,500 is, re is a reasonable amount of money to get started with. Is getting suppliers hard? I already kind of touched on this. I think it is one of the easiest parts of the entire process. Um, once you get your first one, because, I mean, some of them it, you'll have to talk to them on the phone. Some of them you can do it over email. Some of them even just have a form on their website where it says, become a retailer for us. You fill it out, they send you the paperwork, and then you're set up, boom, as a retailer for them. So really, you just have to get your first one or two, and then it's easier for you to go to others where you actually have to communicate a little more with them and say, hey, I'm, I'm working with X and Y company. Um, I think you would be a really great fit too, and I was hoping to have a conversation about that. Um, these are just people that you're working with. They're, they're just human beings, and I think getting suppliers is so much easier than people make it out to be. Now, it, it does require a level of professionalism. It does require you um, to have, you know, pretty decent communication skills in, in the event that, you know, you're going after a more, let's say, quality supplier um, and you have to be able to talk on the phone with them or, or even email with them. Uh, it, it's just going to serve you well if, if you have good, communi good communication skills under your belt. And again, that's, that's why the high barrier of entry here lowers the competition. Um, so short answer or long answer to a short question, is getting suppliers hard? I really don't think so. Can you do high ticket drop shipping outside of the United States? The answer is yes. Uh, I think this is worth the video in and of itself. I have a lot of people in my course that are outside of the United States. I, um, I've talked with people from all over the world in, in Pakistan, in, uh, in India, in the Philippines, in Italy, in the UK, a lot of people in the UK, Australia, you get my point. And, and so if you are doing it outside of the United States, um, there are a few things to keep in mind. Uh, again, the, the idea of the model is you want to be able to, to sell to customers in the country where your suppliers are. So if you are in a country like Finland, where it's a lower population and there are definitely not as many suppliers. You just don't have as big of a market to advertise to. Even though the model is possible to do there, you might want to consider doing it in a different country. A lot of people do it outside of the United States in the United States. Um, and again, th this is worth a video in and of itself. Um, I would say most people that are outside of the U.S. D choose or opt uh, to set up their businesses in the U.S. to sell in the U.S. There are obviously challenges that come along with this and a, a, a few extra steps. You have to get a social security number. Um, as a non-resident, you have to get the business entity. Uh, banking is a little different just for, uh, if you're not on U.S. soil. And then obviously there's a, a time difference. You know, if you're selling to people in the United States, but you're based in the U.K., you're seven hours ahead for, for some time zones, 10 hours ahead. Uh, it just makes customer service more challenging. Uh, that's just something to be aware of as, as you approach things. So can you do this outside of the United States? Absolutely. There are just those factors to keep in mind. Um, price point, I already kind of talked about, uh, several times. What's a good price point for a product? I think $1,000 and above. 
uh, how do you pay for orders? This is one of the most common questions I get, and the answer is very straightforward. You don't have to have money on hand to buy the products from the suppliers. Uh, when someone buys from you on, on, on your store, you will get the funds from the customer to then pay for the product from the supplier. Uh, it's about two to three business days for Shopify to deposit those funds into your bank account. Um, but those are effectively the funds that you use to pay for uh, the order from the supplier. Uh, so I, I hope that's straightforward. Um, let me know if you have any other questions. Um, how do you fulfill orders? Again, this is another thing I already kind of talked about. When someone buys a product from you, you have to send a purchase order to a supplier. And um, I, came from, I came from sales, and so purchase orders were kind of a second nature thing to me. It's basically a document on which you're saying, I would like to order this product, and I would like to ship it to this place. And Google Sheets, it, you know, if you don't want to spend extra money uh, on, on purchase orders, Google Sheets has a template for purchase orders in which uh, you can input your information, you can copy and paste the product information, the SKUs and the price and the, and the product and the, the shipment details and everything associated with the order and then send that and save it as a PDF and then send that to the supplier. Um, I found that that became really hard to keep up with over time. There were a lot of manual errors and it was just kind of a time suck. So there, there are several apps uh, on, on Shopify which you can plug into your Shopify in which you can set up an automated purchase order to be sent via email uh, to the respective supplier based on what product was ordered on your store. I know this video is getting almost close to a half hour now. This is one of my longer ones, but um, ho hopefully this is helpful. Um, let's see, last question. Again, there are so many frequently asked questions and I'll make a whole video on frequently asked questions, but in the meantime, this... Do you need industry experience? And what I mean by that is, let's say you're selling conveyor belts, for example, do you need industry experience in conveyor belts? Absolutely not. Uh, it, it, the, the answer is no. It, it's like anything else, like you will learn the product so much quicker than you realize. And at, as you first get started, and as you first start setting up products, as you first start getting questions from customers, uh, there are just going to be a lot of questions you don't know the answer to, but over time, a lot of those questions will start to repeat themselves and you'll actually get to know your products really well. And that's when you get to a point where you can provide really valuable customer service and you become a really strong competitor in the space. Um, I think that's kind of one of the most rewarding pieces of this model is the customer service that's, that's associated with it. I think the most successful people are the ones that are dedicated to actually truly learning their industry and truly learning the products that they're selling so they can actually provide value, true value to the people that are buying from them. Uh, so do you need industry experience? No. At the beginning, you're not going to know anything, but over time, it's like anything else, you will, you will learn what you're doing. So I'm going to wrap up there. I know that was kind of a longer video, but I hope this is helpful. Uh, I have a course that walks through how to do high ticket drop shipping from beginning to end. It's a screen share. I walk through basically building a high ticket drop shipping store from scratch. I go through niche selection, what I consider, um, how I look for them. I go through how to set up Google ads. I set up uh, a website uh, all in front of your eyes with narration. Um, and there, there are some levels of membership where I also provide one-on-one uh, -on -one mentorship. So um, I encourage you to check it out. And as always, if you have questions, it's absolute gold for me to know what, what people are wondering. So I'll make another one of these videos. I always look at my comments, um, even though sometimes I won't respond to you. Um, I always appreciate the feedback and I always appreciate the questions that you leave. So until next time, I uh, hope you guys have a good one.